Welcome to Yates Mates. Well, the heat wave in the UK is over, which means it's finally cool enough to get back to what seems to be one of my main preoccupations in life, which is kind of seeing how far I can push the gel plate. So here I am with my batik kettle and a janting, and I thought, well, logic led me to it. If wax crayons work, surely batik wax is going to work as well for those of you that have not used batik wax and jantings I'll, I'll come back to it and a few little tips on techniques but let's just see if the thing transfers first it was still pretty warm when i transferred this but um thin layer of amsterdam paint and nice light pressure and as you can see it transferred fairly well now from this point beyond just having a play with some layers of paint and using some second colors to add a little pattern work and then let these layers dry and pull that print up um, just having some fun what i really wanted to know was can i get repeat transfers just like you can with your china graph your wax cray and your oil pastel drawings can you get a repeat transfer or multiple repeat transfers with the one drawing so um pulled this one up um and uh you know as I knew it would by this point, um, it was it was going to work just fine. And then cracked straight on with um, inking up and transferring for my next print. So um, inking up in black again. I'll stress it. You know, I can't help to repeat myself, can it? Thin layer. Don't hang around. Um, you don't want that paint to dry on the surface. Light pressure. I left what left that down for maybe eight ten seconds. Let it dry, a wet layer to pull up your initial drawing as well. So having made that discovery, I tried a kind of more representational drawing and um, uh, done this quick sketch of Frida Kahlo. Obviously, if you've not used a janting before, um, it does kind of limit the type of drawing that you're going to be able to work with. It needs to be quite linear. I'm going to freeze it here because as a, if you've never used a janting, it needs to be a linear drawing, but you're going to want to have this little pad of paper um, because obviously it's hot wax in the little bath um, that funnels down into the, the nozzle of the janting. And just because you stop, the janting isn't going to. So you need to have that little pad of paper just to kind of rest your janting on to break the line and, and give yourself time to think. I love them though, I reckon they really encourage a nice loose expressive line. Okay, so inking up again, just as before, nice thin layer, not hanging around. Very light pressure when you flip your transfer drawing over, and I reckon, although I've sped this up for the sake of the video, because I don't want you all to fall asleep, um, you know, that was down for about 10 seconds. And there you go. Um, I just think you get a really lovely, kind of quite spontaneous, loose looking image from it. So feeling quite encouraged at this point. Um, pulled that one straight up, didn't do anything fancy with it just to see how the quality of line would look. And, you know, as I just said, I was encouraged exactly the sort of drawing I like. You know, it's quite bold. It's got some loose areas. Obviously the gel plate gets some residual grungy marks on. Um, and we know already it's good for um, at least two, but you know, more likely five or six um, prints transfers from here. So um, straight in again to the second one. And this time, you know, I just had a bit of fun with once I'd done this transfer, cleaned it up with a little masking tape. Um, you know, that's the beauty of working with this. You know, you, you can refine the image a little bit. Um, I just thought I'd make a little collage background, try some background colours, get it a bit more kind of, um, you know, a bit more playful, have a bit of fun. So this is just very, very loosely hand ripping some collaged areas. I've then gone back in with a brush and obviously that blue transfer layer, the initial drawing layer is, is completely dry now, which allows you to paint into areas hand paint you can roll in areas of, of background and um, you know just build up some more interest so with those parts done 
I then inked up in, oh, I can't even remember now, I think I'd run out of white, so I was just using like a buff colour once I'd done all my little background touches and um, yeah, as you'll see, pulls up just nice. It's probably worth adding, you know, again, that all of those layers I'd let dry before that last wet layer to do the pull if you've not done these kind of multiple layered gel prints before important you let those layers dry so there you go pleased with that and um, I thought I'd give one more quick transfer a go just to see you know and sure enough the third one came off just fine so there's all three um, and time to you know move on to something a bit more ambitious so I've upped the scale and I'm going to move on to the bigger gel plate and I found this is one of my absolute favorite photos it's a really really beautiful um, portrait of Frida Kahlo and I thought you know I love drawing so a real challenge to just try and reduce um, a portrait down to the most kind of simple linear marks and details and, and not overwork it knowing that I'm going to have to use the janting so I was a bit nervous to kind of get some of these real fiddly details with the janting so I thought well I'll have a go mixing two drawing techniques together so these details I've, I've just got a Crayola um, wax crayon there and done some of the kind of eye details eyebrows some of the tonal work on the face um, just a suggestion of some of the hand details etc before um, getting the janting out and um, you know apologies I was so into the drawing um, did this last night um, I actually forgot to film the janting part but um, you can see here that if I hold it up to the light um, I've tried to let that janting kind of run on about a medium heat and I've really let the wax in the janting cool a little bit um, and, and run a bit thinner to try and keep those lines quite flat to the surface of the paper. You have to experiment for yourselves. Um, right, mixing up a colour for my transfer. Um, and uh, there's, you know, set myself up with my big gel plate. Um, sometimes when it's really hot, I'm finding... I just can't mix two colours on the plate. They dry too fast and um, then I don't get a successful transfer. So um, there we go. Mixed it up on the palette and rolling it out, trying to work fairly quickly, knowing that I'm going to get a lot of texture anyway. And this is, you know, I'm not aiming for perfection. Indeed, what I want here is a more spontaneous, loose looking image. So again, light pressure on the back. You just kind of have to use your fingertips to try and feel for, you know, any lumps and bumps and just try and make sure that you've got the paper to make good contact with the gel plate around those little lumps of wax and, and so forth. And this is in real time, so that's down for about 10 or 15 seconds, I reckon. Peeled up and, um, you know, just as before, encouraged by... Um, you know, all the kind of mixture and variety of different marks that are showing up. Um, if you flip it over, which is going to give you a stronger sense of what it will look like once printed. Um, yeah. Great, pleased with it. So some of these darker areas, um, I've just hand painted in. And I've not watered that acrylic down at all, or mixed any gel media or anything with it. It's just, um, you, know, a, you know, not a loaded brush very light amount of paint now some of this eye detail didn't transfer so well well it did transfer but it's not quite as clear because this was wax crayon resist not the batik wax um not as clear as some of the batik marks so i'm just going to you know hand paint in a little bit of that detail in hope that it holds up in terms of tone in comparison to the rest of the image Again, I had a bit of a play with some background colours, not in any kind of, um, you know, really precise manner. This time just squeezing straight onto the plate and, and rolling out with a, a small, small brayer and just kind of, you know, judging it. Um, these imperfections are probably going to work in your favour, I reckon. So don't be too precious about it. 
So again, you know, keeping some of that residual yellow on just so I get a bit of a colour blend as well. Um, little change in colour and then I'm pulling this with a with a buff colour because I'd actually run out of white I probably would have done it in white um, but they're all experiments so was just really wanting to see how it would pull and um, what I would need to change for my kind of next transfers so yeah pleased with that um, lovely kind of interesting mark making I went straight on and pulled actually what I think he's going to, was probably my favourite from this little experiment. And I just kept it really simple, inked up in a blue. It's got some of that residual kind of grungy stuff from the last print around the edge. And yeah, I'm um, just, yeah, really pleased with that one. And definitely this, the kind of simplicity of this um, is something I'm definitely going to return to, maybe do a little series. But um, I carried on using that first print. Um, I won't go through this because I've covered... Um, similar things in um, a recent video that I'll link up above now um, just by building backgrounds, collage, stenciling parts off. Um, I don't want these videos to get too repetitive but yeah just spent a bit of time building up a background and um, but I will share with you one discovery I made which was this that uh, once you've transferred your image um, onto the plate, uh, I think it works particularly well with this sort of quite loose expressive work. Um, if you want to hand paint any areas, um, it works really nice if you water down, um, oh sorry, I probably shouldn't say water down, if you just dilute a little your um, acrylic paint with liquid gel medium, um, you just get this... Um, it's just a really even coverage um obviously if you if you did if you did this with water you're going to get um quite a sort of broken globby texture and um the gel medium in here just really helps it kind of keep its integrity and you get a nice even thin albeit transparent layer the transparency is, is kind of what i was wanting with this um, so yeah, just hand painting, mixing all my colours with a tiny little bit of um, liquid gel medium. I'm using Liquitex gel medium if, if you're interested in the brand. And all the paints I use in this video as well are uh, Amsterdam paints. Um, so um, there you go, I'll skip on a bit and you can see I'm just hand painting um, little areas in. This actually I didn't dilute um, because it's white and I needed... The kind of white I know to sit over my background colour, so I thought I'd probably have a better chance of it showing up if I left it full opacity. Um, using the same gel medium here, liquid gel medium, to, to pull the print. So everything's dried, put in a really thin layer of liquid gel medium over the top of that, and that's what will pull all of these layers off and transfer them onto the paper. So flipping over, using the transparency of the gel plate to help me register over my background. And you know, as I said before, I've, I've got similar videos on this that I've already linked, so I'm not gonna bang on about it too much. You can go back and have a look at those if if you're interested. Um, this one, yeah, it wasn't really for me, if I'm honest. It's a bit too fussy, a bit too much. Didn't really like the newspaper collage, but um, interesting to kind of have fun experiment and you know mainly what i wanted to know was can i get these kind of multiple repeat prints out of the one batik wax and wax crayon drawing and well we've got our answer it's all good all right there you go hope you enjoyed that hope it gives you some fresh ideas um i'll leave you with my favorite print from this little trial and wish you all well. Hope to see you soon in another video. Take it easy. Ta-ta.